Hello everybody. Uh, this is a recording for the DITA PSU class. What I'm going to show you today is uh, how to actually create all of the deliverables for this class or the class projects. As I usually say at the beginning of these recordings, unless I make an egregious mistake, I'm going to just continue on um, and uh, try to recover from any mistakes I make. Hopefully I won't make too many mistakes. So here goes. Uh, the first thing that I want to show you, uh, my sort of go-by here, will be the class uh, slides for class four. In class four, we went over uh, what the requirements were for the deliverables. So I'm just going to actually do each of these projects uh, to the best of my ability to kind of show you uh, how they're done. So the first um, re uh, deliverable is the D1 deliverable. So in Easy Dita, uh, we're expected to produce a data sheet. Uh, the example is uh, here in this URL in the slides, uh, or you could look at the PDF version. Our second requirement for the grad students is to export the data sheet and compile it as a Dita, excuse me, a doc book in the Dita Open Toolkit. Uh, I will demonstrate how to do that. Um, we've already gone over the evaluation de uh, uh, criteria in class, so I'm just going to get right to the uh, demonstration here. So the first thing we need to do is to be able to uh, look at the data sheet that we are going to copy. So I'm going to pull it up in Chrome. I'm going to get a new uh, tab here and we'll take a look at that data sheet. Okay, so this is an actual data sheet from the actual website. Uh, it looks a little bit different um, now. The formatting looks a little bit different than it did in the uh, slides that I made, but it's still the same deal. So this uh, is an actual data sheet made up in DITA, and we're going to mimic this uh, best we can. We don't have to mimic it word for word, but we want to have elements from each of these sections in our uh, Easy Data project. So uh, we have the data sheet. Uh, also, if you want to look for an example uh, in the uh, Easy Data uh, repository, look under Unit Z and you'll see the one that I did uh, that mimics this. Um, and if you can do what I did in the Unit Z uh, um, example, you should be in good shape uh, for, for your project. So the requirements are pretty simple. Uh, everything that's highlighted here is expected to be in your data sheet, which is to say you don't have to use these words, but you have to have a title, a subtitle, uh, an image, a paragraph. Uh, some bulleted list and some second order bulleted lists and so forth. Uh, so this is part one. Uh, part two, this is not actually in the data sheet so you have to use your imagination a little bit. Uh, we're going to do a made up installation procedure uh, as if it were on the um, data sheet and I'll go over the steps on how to do that as well. Uh, part three is the um, specifications. So again, you don't have to have these exact words, but I want you to be able to demonstrate that you can put a title, uh, an introductory paragraph, uh, subtitles, and then a specification along with uh, its value. So this uh, cable length, for example, is the specification, and this value I is the value. Uh, so part four would be ordering information, um, and then part five will be, uh, I actually want you to conref in um, some elements into the data sheet and I will uh, show you how to do all that. So why don't we uh, back it up to uh, the actual parts and let's get started. So I'm going to pull up my uh, Easy Data interface. Um, the Easy Data interface, I gave you uh, your credentials. Those were e emailed to you and each of you has a corresponding folder that you're expected to do your work in. So for this class, uh, one of the unused folders, I think, is uh, uh, Unit 12. So I'll use that as if it were my, um, as if it were my uh, assigned uh, folder for this class. So the first thing uh, that you'll want to do is to create a folder, a new folder, to put this project in. So I'm going to click the Create New Folder button, and I'm going to name it PSU underscore data sheet okay and I'm going to uh, allow it to default to open the folder after create okay so that's uh, the 
um, the folder in which we will do our work. The uh, first thing I want to do then is to create um, a topic. Uh, this, as we know, by looking at or by knowing uh, what topics are appropriate for what kind of information, uh, this uh, information for this data sheet I think is most uh, properly uh, put into the concept uh, type. So we'll get a concept. So in here, I will do a create new button and then I will say default concept and I'm going to call it introduction or I'll just call it intro I N T R O and I'm going to create an edit okay so what that does is it gives me a concept a blank concept the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, click into the title area and I'm going to backspace over the title and the title of my data sheet is going to be, uh, in this case, I'm going to pretty much mimic what's in the um, uh, data sheet, kind of word for word. You don't have to do this. You could make it, uh, the title of my data sheet is uh, uh, how to build houses or um, uh, computer specifications or whatever you want. But for this exercise, I'll just type A-C-C-U-R-R-E-N-T. P-R-O-B-E-S, okay, and for my short description, I'll say that um, uh, these, well, I'll, I'll actually I'll just uh, type in uh, P602 1A and ampersand, excuse me, um, and, which is the ampersand, uh, P six zero two two. Now I'm going to take a minute here to uh, show you something. We learned earlier that in uh, XML to have uh, well-formed XML, we can't have a, a unescaped ampersand because ampersand is one of the reserved characters in XML. So uh, Easy Data knows that, and Easy Data takes care of that for us. So I'm going to. Uh, view this and, I, and one of the things you need to know is that you can't just click on the little down arrow you have to click on the word itself I'm going to view this um, well maybe it's not this one is it under tools no well I'm looking to my for how do I, I look at this in uh, XML okay source code edit source code and I see that when I typed that in it was actually escaped for me by the uh, software, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to um, exit out of that, go back into my topic here, and hit the Edit button. So now I'm back to editing. Okay, and I'm back into my WYSIWYG view. So the first thing I'm going to do is to write a paragraph. Uh, the paragraph uh, says, uh, uh, the, oops, I didn't save, oh, that's interesting, I didn't save my work before. Okay, like I said, if I, unless I make a really bad mistake, I'm just going to keep the tape rolling. So here we go. I'm going to redo what I did before, A, C, current, current, probes, and in my short description, I'm going to say, P, Six O two one A and P six zero two two and in my so then I'm going to save. Hitting my save button and now I'm going to continue. So then I'm going to put a paragraph in here. And to save time, I'm not going to write word for word anymore. I'm just going to uh, make things up. So I need an introductory, introductory paragraph. So I'm going to say um, the current probes are wonderful. There's my introductory paragraph. From here, I'm going to want to uh, create 
a new element. So I'm going to go into my insert and easy data will only give me the uh, choices of things that are valid to go in here. So in this instance I'm going to create um, a an unordered list. Uh, the first thing that I need though actually is a section here. So I'm going to create a section. By creating a section it lets me create a title. So I'm going to say P performance specifications and then I see that one of my requirements here is to have a couple of ordered lists with um, uh, with a um, second order uh, ordered lists so here I'm going to insert an or unordered list I said ordered list I meant unordered list and I'm going to just say for the P six zero two one A, it's going to have some specifications. And I'm going to just create the I'm going to hit my enter key and it's going to give me another bullet. I know that this needs to be a, um, a second order list, but I'm gonna go ahead and create my two uh, sub bullets and then tab them over. So I'm going to say that this one is uh, ten units per second. I'm just making up specifications here and um, um, average uh, rise time of 1000. Totally making stuff up here. So now what I can do is I can hit, I can put this, uh, my cursor in front of the first letter in the bullet and I can hit my tab key and it tabs it over and I can hit my tab key and it tabs it over. So then I'm going to put my cursor at the end of the first bullet, hit enter, and I'm going to do a shift tab. And that brings me back into a first order list. And I'm going to say P6021 and I'm going to add a couple specifications for it. I'm going to say um, Twenty units per second. I'm going to hit another bullet and say um, average rise time of two thousand. I'm going to tab that over. Oops. I'm going to tab this over. Okay, and now. If I go back, I see that I have, oops, uh, I need to put key features and applications and then a couple of other paragraphs. So I'm going to quickly do that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make another uh, um, section, and I'm just going to do one of these, but then you would do it uh, actually two times to satisfy the requirements, and then I'll move on to uh, how to do the paragraphs. Okay, so here at the end of section, I'm going to insert section okay and it'll give me a title and my title here will be key features okay and then I'm going to do the same thing I did before I'm going to go into this paragraph I'm going to insert an unordered list and I'm going to say um, uh, to just make up a couple of key features here um, form factor and um, style. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Uh, you would actually need to make sure that you then created a couple of more bullets and then an application section and some bullets for that. But I'm going to skip right down to these paragraphs here. So I'm going to get outside of my paragraph. So notice that I clicked outside the paragraph. I'm going to insert a section and I'm going to call that P six O two one A 
and I'm going to make up a nice story for it. I already have a paragraph here, so I'm just going to write in my paragraph the P60210 a is fast, reliable, and um, looks good. There's my paragraph. Okay, so I'm going to save this concept, and I'm going to close. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my next required part, which is the installation procedure. So for this, I will use a task, um, because uh, the proper, as we know from the data classes we've had so far, the proper uh, topic type for this is task. So I'll create. And in this case, I'm going to do a um, general task, default general task. Okay, and I'm going to call it, what am I call it? Installation procedure. Okay, so I'll just call it install. And I'm going to create an edit. And I'm going to then back over the uh, title that it created for me. And I'm going to call it um, probe installation okay and I see here that my requirement is that I have a, a introductory paragraph <coughs> another paragraph and then uh, some installation procedures followed by a, um, a closing paragraph so I'm going to try to commit that to memory and I'm going to put uh, in context um, the probe need oops need to be installed okay and then I'm going to say that uh, the command is uh, oh and then I need to actually put another uh, paragraph here so I'm going to insert paragraph oops that was not where I wanted to do it so I'm going to Command Z and do that. I'm going to go at the end of this paragraph. Oh, I should have put a period there. I'm going to insert paragraph and be sure to install the probe above uh, freezing or something like that. So I'll put some kind of paragraph here. Be sure to have all the tools on hand that you will you will need. Okay, so my command is uh, take it out of the box. Enter to do another command, um, and I'm going to say, uh, what does it say? Oops, I've got a hot mouse here that's wanting to advance these slides. Remove the back panel by loosening the four screws. Insert the batteries, the flash card, and the memory booster. Uh, replace the back panel. Okay, I'll do something like that. So. Um, the back panel, enter, uh, insert the battery flash card and memory booster, and then my final step is going to be uh, replace the back panel. And then my result will be, da -da 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 -da. okay, my result is um, once the installation 
is complete, the probe will operate as expected. Okay, I'm going to save this and close. Uh, part three will be specification. So specifications usually use the reference uh, type. So um, I haven't rehearsed this, so let's see uh, just how appropriate the reference uh, topic is for creating this kind of a specification. Okay, so I will create a new specification uh, reference. Okay, and I'm going to call that specifications. Okay, I'm going to create an edit. Next thing that I need to do is to create an introductory paragraph in my body. Call it specifications. And the introductory paragraph is going to say these are the specifications for the probes. Okay. And then I'm going to get into my physical oops, this should have been physical characteristics, my mistake. Okay. So this let's see if I can copy and paste. are the spec the specifications for the probe probes and this actually should have said physical characteristics okay got ahead of myself sorry about that Okay, and then we're going to have a cable length. Uh, we're going to have a, a, another um, specification that has sub-specifications and so forth. So I'll just quickly make these. Okay, so here I'm going to say insert definition list. Okay, so the term is cable length. definition is going to be uh, some measurement. Right. We're gonna, we'll, let's call this um, um, seven, oops, seven inches. And if I knew off the top of my head what the metric value of that would be, I would add it, but I, I don't. So then we need a uh, another uh, uh, definition list with sub-definition lists for length, width, height, and uh, maximum. So let's do that. Let's go here. Let's create another definition list. OK. 
right? So did you notice that I went after the existing definition list and I add in a term for the uh, P6021 a and then I'm going to leave the definition blank and then within this definition I'm going to add another definition list so this is going to be a second order definition list and I'm going to give it um, length width and height height we'll just do that so the length is um, call that 15 inches and then I'm going to need another definition list here and it's still in the definition so I'm going to insert definition list and I'm going to actually that's in um, width its uh, definition will be it's uh, four inches wide okay and then I'm going to add another definition list notice that we're still in the definition of the first uh, definition list here so we're adding here another definition list and we're going to call this height H T and its height will be um, uh, nine inches. So it looks like we have a probe. Oops, inches. We have a probe that is 15 inches long, four inches wide, and nine inches high. I'm not sure what kind of a probe that would be, but we'll call it good. And then um, we see that we need to have. Uh, we would do the same thing for the second probe. Do that. So for that, we want to be at this level. So we'll be in the definition list. So we'll go outside of the definition list, and we'll add another definition list. Okay. So that means that this is a uh, of the same level of indentation as the first one. I think the other one was called P6200. I don't actually remember. And then we'll just add uh, a couple of uh, definition lists for it. So I'm going to insert definition list call it length and we're going to say that its length is the um, uh, 17 inches and then still within its definition we're going to add another definition list called width and we're going to say that it is 5 inches wide And so on. I'm just going to uh, leave it at that, and then we'll pretend that we did a um, a height. Okay. So, and now we need to put a, a compliance um, characteristic in there, and I think that it will be. I'm I'm not making you put in another section, although you could. We'll just make this another uh, um, definition list, which is going to be um, at the same level as our our first definition list. So we cl we clicked outside of the definition for our first one. You see that it ends here. I'm going to click here and I'm going to insert definition list. And what was this one again? Um, compliance. I'm going to give it some sort of a compliance rating. So the compliance um, I'm just making stuff up. Okay. I think these are all the requirements for the specification section, so I'm going to save this okay, and close. So notice now that we have our introduction, our installation, our specifications, and then our part four requirement is ordering information. So I'm just going to uh, create the uh, uh, abbreviated version of this. You can use the same steps that you used before. Uh, to create the specifications, to create all of the robust stuff that I'm going to be requiring. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to put in um, a title and then the, uh, uh, the first definition list, and then I'll put in, I'll, I'll call that good.
So let's do another um, create. And of course, this would again be the reference. Okay, so we'll call this ordering information. Okay, so let's create and edit. Okay, so we'll call this ordering information. And what do we have in terms of, okay, so we don't really need any kind of introductory paragraph here. We just go right into our definition lists. So let's go right into the body and let's insert def a section and we'll call it models. Actually, no, let's not. Oh yeah, we can do that. Okay, let's call it models. F-D-E-I-S. And for our definition, our first definition list, we want uh, uh, the P621A and, and we're going to just give it some uh, ordering information. So, uh, so we'll do a definition list and the first one is the P, I don't even remember, 621A and we can order this. Um, um, the ordering information is uh, available and then we're going to want to create another definition list and this one is for the P6200 and let's say that it's also available or let's say back ordered okay now um, it might be confusing that I I uh, used a section here and a title, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to build one more. Uh, oops, I didn't insert. Okay, one more. Um, so, so in references, one more section here, and these are models. So then the next section would be standard accessories. Standard. got a really hot mouse here. Bar, sorry about this. Um, let's get back to that standard accessories. Uh, you guys are all technical writers, so you'll be much better at spelling and uh, typing than I am. And I'm just going to put one uh, list in here um, for definition list. Call it um, case, and its definition will be um, uh, fully functional. Making stuff up. Okay, so one of the things that we said that we had to do here is at the bottom for part five, at the bottom of ordering information, conref the address information from. Space Travel Gadgets Company information. Do I even have that? Let's save this and make sure that I have that there. And let's close this. Okay. Do I have Space Travel Gadgets documents? Company information. And let's just take a quick look at this preview. Okay. So this is the information that I want to conref into my data sheet. So let's close this. Okay, let's go back to, what are we here in 12, I think? PSU data sheet. Okay, that's what we're building. Let's edit this again. Okay, so we know that down here, we need to add some ordering information. I think it'll go right here um, in the paragraph. So what we do then is we hit our conref button. I haven't even tried this yet with the new version of Easy Data, so we'll see how it works. Content. Insert a conref. Okay. Insert it here. And it's going to say, where do you want to look for the, what you want to insert? So I'll go into Space Travel Gadgets, Documents, Company Information. And we'll look in here. Oops, that's not what we want to do.
I'm so sorry if I unless I make a big mistake here, I'll I'll just keep soldiering on it. So let's assume that we can go here. Um, content menus, insert column. Okay, so I'm going to go into space gadgets, documents, company information. take um, the Smith Memorial Student Union um, I must call it paragraph okay I must take as new call it paragraph I must take Broadway call it paragraph and Portland I see it only let me do one there. All right, you have to do them one at a time. So that was some learning for me. So while I'm here, still here, um, uh, so we did some learning. What we learned there is that I can only pick one at a time. So I'm going to go with my cursor above Portland, Oregon. I'm going to again say reuse content, insert Conra, and I'm going to navigate to the same place I was. Documents, company information. Okay, and I single click that. And above that, I want uh, 1825 Southwest Broadway. And I'm going to pick that as a paragraph. And I'm going to select it. OK, good. So then what I'm doing is I'm building this from the bottom up. That's fine. You can do it either way. So now I'm going to uh, reuse content, insert Conref. And I'm going to go to my favorite place here, company information. I'm actually going to star this, see what happens there. Okay, and I'm going to pick this. And I'm going to say 209 Mezzanine Suite B, paragraph. Okay, select it. And then I'm going to continue to build upward. Reuse, content, insert, conref. And what if I go to my starred? Does that give me? Yes, okay, good. So that was how I, I set that shortcut. And I'm going to pick it, and the uh, Smith Memorial Student Union paragraph. Select. OK. So that's uh, uh, the part five. We added that. Let's just take a quick look uh, and an XML view and see what that looks like. Um, so we're going to add it. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to save. I always save. OK, so I saved. And now I'm going to look at the uh, XML view of that source code just to see what the uh, what it did there so we have some sections here um, and the uh, uh, the conrefs come in the form of a conref attribute here okay and it shows us where it resolves so this is good information this uh, shows us that the uh, information isn't really in this paragraph but rather is drawn from the conref so I'll just save that So now uh, we have all of these uh, topics that we need. The last thing we need is to um, tie all of these together. So what we'll need to do then is to create a map. So I'm going to create, and I'm going to create a default map. Okay, And I'm going to create an edit. Oh, I need to, to name it. So we'll call this um, My Data Sheet. So I'm going to create an edit. Okay, so I'm in my data sheet here. I'm going to create my data sheet. So the first thing I need in the data sheet is going to be my uh, install, excuse me, my intro. So I'm going to drag that topic into my data sheet and insert. And what that told me then is that I now have um, a topic in my data sheet called um, introduction. So the next thing that we needed was the, let's go back and make sure we get these in the right order, the installation procedure. Okay, so that's install. So I'm going to grab install and I'm going to put it 
insert it under the uh, first topic. I could have uh, nested it, but I'm not going to. Actually, I would need to add, uh, another map if I wanted to nest. So now I've got two topics, and then the third part I needed was the uh, specifications. So I'm going to grab my specifications, and I'm going to drag it into the map and insert. And then the fourth part that I will need is my ordering information. So I'll grab my ordering information, and I will put it under the specifications and insert. Okay, so I'm going to save my current map. Okay. So now my map is pointing to all of the things that I need. So my required output is PDF and HTML or XHTML. So I'm going to publish each of these, and they will be in the, rep in the repository, so I won't need to do anything further. Uh, for grad students, you also need to export this project and compile it and into the Ditto Open Toolkit. Okay, so from my map directory, I'm going to hit Publish. Actually, I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to make sure that I'm on my actual map. Okay, I don't know if that matters or not, but just kind of a best practice. So I'm going to publish. Okay, this. Uh, let's see if that helps. I guess not. I'm just we're kind of stuck with this artifact. Okay, so we're going to publish uh, using the Data Open Toolkit. Okay, uh, and it says this map hasn't been published, click New Publish to start a new one. Okay, so New Publish. Uh, we're going to create use the basic 1.5.3, and we're going to add. Okay. Uh, please fill in the description before uh, publishing, so I'll click that. Trans type. Is, oh, description. Okay, so we're going to say this is uh, my PDF. Okay, and we're going to say that the trans type, and we're going to leave it at the default language of English, and the trans type will be PDF. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and publish. Okay, so the status is please wait. And we see that uh, now our PDF is ready. Okay. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to see that it's available just for, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to download it, and save. And I'll save it right to my desktop. And it's called My Data Sheet, so I'll save that. Okay, so I'm going to look for it in Finder. And sure enough, there it is, so I'm going to double click. It's a zip file, and it created a uh, folder for me, and I'm going to look at it. And it says Basic. Go in here, and sure enough, there's my data sheet. And I'll look at it. And I have a PDF file that has all of the parts that I needed to have in my data sheet. Oh, I see one thing that I forgot to do, so I'm going to quickly go back. I, I said that I had to put an image in there. Okay, so I'm going to go back and edit my data sheet. Oops. So here's my data sheet, and I noticed that I don't have an image in it, so I'm going to by the way, I noticed I had it on my other screen, so uh, when I downloaded, it went to the desktop. I double-clicked this. It created this. I looked in here, and I found my data sheet. And then I discovered that I didn't have the image. So I'm done with this. I'm going to be done with this. I'm going to go back into my introduction. I'm going to edit it. Okay, so when I edited it, the introduction, if I go back to where I needed to have an image, sorry that I missed that step. step. So that goes right under uh, the short description. So I'm going to put it uh, right here. I'm going to insert. 
figure. And in this case, the figure doesn't need a title, so I won't put a title in. But what I will do is change. I clicked on the, the box here, and I'm going to say change. Okay. And when I do that, it gives me uh, this browse menu. So I know that I have an images directory here that has 10 images. And for this, I'm going to pick David Gilmore Stratocaster select and in it goes okay so if I wanted to do an alt I would add an alt in fact I think I will because that's just a good practice for um, uh, browsers that need to have uh, something to uh, to uh, put in case the uh, image is not uh, viewable so I'm just going to call this guitar okay I'm going to save that Okay, so now I'm going to save and close. So now if I redid that PDF, you would have the, uh, the requirement of having the image in there, uh, but I don't think I'm going to do that. The other thing that I needed to be able to do was to uh, create um, HTML. So I'm going to publish using the Open Toolkit. I'm going to new publish. I'm going to fill in the description. This is my XHTML. XHTML. And I'm going to. Okay, so I have that. I wish I could close this thing. Oh, so I have to pick my uh, scenario. And I'm going to pick basic 153, trans type XHTML. So I'm going to go ahead and publish. And it's in progress. It's running. By the way, these timestamps that they put on, I have no idea. Uh, according to me, it's Sunday, 11.21 a.m. Uh, just getting ready to watch football games today myself. But it says uh, 7.21 p.m. At any rate, here's my XHTML. I'm going to click it. I'm going to download it. I'm going to save. I'm going to save it right to the desktop. At it in Finder. And it's going to show me that it's right on my desktop. I'll double click it. Okay, it made a new directory. And in Basic, if I go into my index, you'll see that I have links then to all of the uh, parts that I just made. looks the way it's supposed to look, including my conref in information. So everything is, is very good. Okay, so follow those steps to create uh, your data sheet. If you are an undergraduate student, you've just satisfied all of the requirements. If you're a grad student, you have to create, let's go back to the slides, If you're a grad student, you need to create, sorry again, fast mouse, um, the uh, doc book version of this. So uh, I'm going to quickly go over that. Let's get rid of this, get rid of this. Okay, so um, how on earth do I do that? Well, in uh, my data sheet, I can, uh, let's see here. Right click on the data sheet, and that does not do what I wanted it to do. So, um, okay, so if I go to, I'm just, uh, again, uh, I, I'm, as I said, I haven't rehearsed this, so I see my data sheet here in the uh, files uh, directory under PSU data sheet content. So I'm going to click on this guy here on the right that has the, the three horizontal dots or vertical dots under options and uh, download and dependencies. Download and dependencies. Okay. I'm going to save that file. 
again, I'll save it right on the desktop. Okay, so I'll open it in Finder. And it shows me this right on the desktop. Now I'm going to do something slightly different. If you'll bear with me for just a moment, let me get rid of this. Uh, I'm going to minimize my uh, Easy Ditta interface and my PowerPoint. And I'm going to show you that I have created on my desktop something called My Ditta Open Toolkit. So the way I got this was I went to D2L and I went into my course content menu pick. I went into res uh, resource files and I saw that there was something called um, PSU did an open toolkit and I downloaded that and then I got a zip file and on my desktop on the zip file I simply e if I'm in Mac I simply double clicked it if I'm in um, Windows I right clicked it and then I said extract all and I extracted it right onto my desktop and in my case I renamed it something intuitive to me so uh, hopefully you did the same thing and you have somewhere on your desktop uh, I, I did an open toolkit that is um, uh, that has all of the bugs that I've discovered fixed so that it runs nicely for this class. By the way, if you're using uh, Windows and you found that that was in read-only mode or in um, uh, encrypted mode, please let me know. I'll show you how to, how to fix that. Okay, so in this case, <coughs> I have my uh, on my desktop the uh, bundle that I just uh, exported from that map. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to Double click it to expand it. I see that it's here on my desktop. I'll double click that and I'll see that I have um, my. Um, this is not exactly what I expected. Uh, let me see what I've got here. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Okay, that's fine. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, freshly zipped file. And I'm going to actually give it a more intuitive name. Uh, this just helps me. So I'm going to call this um, for docbook. Mm -mm -mm okay, okay, for docbook. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it right onto my open toolkit root directory. Okay, and then I'm going to understand that it in for document unit 12 PSU data sheet that that is where my um, the uh, data sheet is that what the map is that I'm going to want to export to docbook so I, I actually haven't tried this with the 2.2 version of the open toolkit so I'm just gonna hope this works so I'm gonna navigate back to my desktop and I know that in order to uh, create the uh, publication of docbook I need to activate my start command in Windows I would just simply double click uh, start command dot bat but for the Mac I need to go to my terminal and again I found this under utilities actually let's do it that way I, I dragged it down here but uh, you would do go into utilities and you would have your terminal. I, what I did is I dragged the terminal down here into my desktop, but uh, you can just double click it here and that brings you up your terminal. Okay, let's get rid of this. Oops. Okay, I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Uh, how do I do that? View larger. So it's Command Plus. Okay, hopefully you can see that pretty well. Okay, so now I'm on my desktop, and I know that if I did a um, ls, it would show me everything that's in that directory. And I see that my desktop is right there, so I'm going to do a cd space desktop, enter. And I'm going to do, a, again, cd 
into my d i t a underscore o t enter and i'll do an ls to see that what i have here is uh, the all of the files from my open toolkit so i'm going to go back into my desktop this actually I'm going to double click here again okay so what I've just changed directories to all of these files correspond with uh, I know that I'm right here so I know that I need to type D I T A space minus I for input space and it wants to know where that map is so I know that it's in four doc book okay and I know that there's a subdirectory so I'll hit my slash and to remind myself the first one is unit 12 so I'll type unit dash 12 and I know that it's buried even more deeply in there and it's under PSU underscore data sheet so I'll hit my slash PSU underscore D A T A S H E E T. Okay, hopefully I haven't typoed anything here. If I go into it, I know that my map is called my data sheet dot data map. So I'm going to type that. I'm going to type slash my D A T A S H E E T dot D I T A M A P. Hopefully I didn't uh, fat finger any of those or typo any of those. So I'm going to then space. And for my format, minus F, I'm going to say doc book. And then for my directory, I'm just going to call it doc out. Hopefully that's all correct. I'm going to hit my enter key. And it's, oh, <laughs> I skipped a step. Okay, so remember when I am in my root directory I forgot that I needed to do my start command so if you see uh, this kind of a res result that's possibly what would happen so since I'm in the Mac I'm just going to type sh space start cmd dot sh okay and I get the familiar uh, uh, warnings and indication that I'm now into the uh, version of the command line that has uh, given me my um, environment variables. So now I'm going to do the same thing that I did up here. I'm going to actually copy this. Command C. And I'm going to click down here. And Command V for paste. And then I'll hit my enter. On the uh, target doc out does not exist. Hmm. Interesting. Did I? Oh, I didn't put the minus O. Okay, so I'm going to paste it again. Okay, so I'm going to backspace and write dash O for output and then put doc out. Okay, so it's dita space minus I space and then the path of the where to find the map, which is for doc book slash unit. 12 slash PSU underscore data sheet slash my data sheet dot data map and then we have the minus F for the format and hopefully docbook is one of the uh, accepted formats I think it is and then minus O for the output directory and then we're telling it to go to doc out once again I'll hit my enter key uh, so far I don't have any complaints well I have a few complaints um, it looks like uh, I've gotten a few warnings outside the scope of this data map directory I'll have to figure that out. But uh, if I go into to see if it made it made a doc out and it made an XML file, so I'm just going to go ahead and look at this in my text editor. Oops. Uh, we can go into um, actually I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say uh, hmm, I guess I can't say open it with. I could. Okay. Okay, open with. I'm going to pick Text Wrangler. 
and it gave me the uh, docbook file and uh, in it I have everything I need this is all of my uh, data sheet it's in the uh, format of a docbook XML file we talked about what docbook was before the purpose for actually having the students do this uh, is nothing more than to um, prove to me that you know how to export from easy data and you know how to use the open toolkit to create a non-mainstream uh, publication uh, in the real world we probably would never really need to create a docbook file out of a, a data project so these uh, warnings that we got I think it was uh, talking about um, some stuff that I, I'm not going to figure out right here so I'm just going to call that good uh, if you get these similar warnings and are interested in, in what it is all about uh, please let me know and I will um, uh, let you I'll troubleshoot it with you so that concludes today's uh, D1 exercise uh, I will create a different video for D2 and for X1 and for D3 uh, but this will be the conclusion for the D1 exercise hope that was useful for you thank you everybody goodbye <laughs>